This is Dan from MSS Endurless. Welcome to the channel. This is Dan from MSS Endurless. I was cleaning out some of my hard drives and I found this amazing video on food storage from the LDS Church, which I'm a member of. So I thought I would share it with you. So let's get started. All right. Um, let's see. Moving on. We've got... <clears throat> The basic foundation of this food storage, if you're not going to do this that I'm going to talk about, forget it, go back to the one month kits because you can't do this without going through this step. So deal with it. This is canned meat. Don't anybody make any rude comments or I'll take your book away. This is chicken and this is beef and I know it doesn't look wonderful but you know tuna fish doesn't look that great if you put it in a jar but it's still really good meat. You cannot buy meat that is this good. It's fully cooked and ready to eat and this is the easiest process you will ever ever do. I can put up a hundred pounds of meat in one day from eight in the morning until maybe four in the afternoon. A hundred pounds. You figure if you have a pound of meat every day in three days I could do my whole year supply in three days using two canners. The process here is very, first off when you get canned meat, like at Costco, you have a can of chicken, it's a three pound can. That can is going to last maybe two years because it's metal. The meat in this jar has a minimum 10 year shelf life. I say 10 years, we have meat that's 20 years old and it's still good. But I say 10 years because you know, you can, you can spend three days doing new meat every 10 years. So I give this a really long shelf life. Um, this is, you can can anything, chicken, beef, moose, caribou, snake, anything you can get your hands on, if it's meat you can can it. The exceptions are processed meats like hot dogs and bologna and turkey ham, you can't do those, they go mushy. The process here, you take raw meat, that's the beauty of it. Now if you get a canner and you get the book, it's going to tell you to cook it first. Do what you want but I don't do it that way, neither do any of the people that I do this with. We would never cook it first because it, it, then it's double processed and it's just not as good. Oh, let me finish with the can. If you get the can of chicken and you pay like three dollars a pound, we have done the test, you get a pound of skin and bones, a pound of liquid and a pound of meat. I got a full pound of chicken out of this. One pint holds a, a pound of meat. It makes its own juice, there's no water, there's nothing added to it but a little bit of salt. You take raw meat, you slam it in the jar, you do the process, it's in the book. Detailed instructions in the book. You don't even, don't even look at your instructions if you buy one of these because the instructions in my book are better. They're more detailed. You're going to do everything you need to do with the lid, heat it and all that. You put it in a canner. You cook it for, uh, it's 75 minutes for pints and an hour and a half for quarts. Quart holds two pounds of meat, pint holds one pound. You take it out, you wipe it off, you put it in the box, and you shove it under the bed and you've got your meat for your food storage, minimum 10 years. Fully cooked, ready to eat. It could not be simpler. Yes? So you don't suggest rotating it, like using it? That's the biggest problem is that it's impossible not to use. It's so good, it's so convenient. I mean, you think about what you guys make. If you make chicken enchiladas, chicken soup, chicken delight, any kind of chicken salad sandwiches, uh, chicken tacos, beef tacos, anything that you have meat it's fully cooked and ready to eat you open it up and you can have dinner in 15 minutes so your biggest problem isn't having it sit under the bed it's keeping it under the bed because you use it so when meat goes on sale I just go down and that's the nice part too everything goes on sale you don't pay full price for anything so it's time saving it's money saving and it's an amazing food storage because with this your food storage now includes beef stew chicken delight, uh, parmesan chicken, taco pie, and just about anything. Enchiladas, you've got real meat. Your options are TVP. Has anybody had TVP? <laughs> if you have a dog, even your dog won't eat TVP. And I'm not making a joke. Nobody can eat TVP. It's really disgusting. When you compare it to real meat, and I know, I know it looks really strange. One girl called it a science experiment. I'm going, you know what? It is tender. It's delicious. It's absolutely amazing. And you bought it on sale. You can can it in one day and it lasts minimum 10 years. So for food storage, this is a must. 
Yes. I have two questions. Do you usually use like for your chicken, chicken breasts? Anything. I do just because they're really easy and they've been really cheap lately but boneless skinless but if you can do legs I just don't like to use the space with bones because I'm not going to eat the bones but it you know just depends on what you want to do someone else had a question well, I have another question too. Your, your canner right there you suggest using that kind of canner okay let's go to the canner but if you have a different kind of pressure canner it still works okay. this is 70 years old seven zero I bring this because it's a smaller one and because it's an antique and because it tells you it still works if you buy a canner you will hand it down to your grandchildren they won't know what to do with it but you'll hand it down to them I mean how many of you know how to can meat this has been around for almost a hundred years and nobody knows how to do it they look at this and they go oh they get all disgusted and I'm just laughing going I know you buy tuna fish I know you do and that's all this is it's just other kinds of meat that you have done yourself the process could not be simpler ladies and gentlemen you, you know you take the lid off buying a canner I've already gone through the process so I'm going to tell you what to buy in the book it gives you details on what what kind of canner to buy if you already have a canner and it has a gasket the rubber gasket then that's fine you know it, it's the first thing to go if you don't have a canner do not buy one with a gasket because I guarantee at some point you're going to put all your meat in there and you're going to turn it on and steam's going to pour out every place except where it should because the gasket always goes bad get a metal to metal canner first I'm going to tell you the price if you buy a brand new one it's going to cost you hundred and fifty dollars for a beautiful canner it's just I mean it's gorgeous it'll do double stacks of, of uh, pints you can do seven quarts it's beautiful it's a, in the book it's a 921 21 quart but I have since when I used to tell people don't bother buying a used one just get a nice one it'll last forever I have since gone to eBay and bought five canners every one of them have worked perfectly as long as it is metal to metal meaning no rubber gasket it has when you get on eBay if you're going to do it on eBay look at the picture and you can tell if it has a gauge on it, it has 5 10 15 that tells you how many pounds of pressure it should have a release valve on it over here this type of thing it should have the little wing nuts that will you know clamp down the lid um, pressure release inside it should have a tray because the bottles should not sit on the bottom of the canner it should sit on a tray and basically those are just the, the five requirements I, the five that I purchased ran between fifty to seventy dollars and that included the shipping so you can get a really good deal on eBay buying a used one or if you have you, and if you're worried about it the extension center will check them for free ASU Extension Center, just call them and they'll check your canner for free. Question? Has to be a pressure canner. For meat, you have to have pressure. Yeah, they, they've got the bath, the water bath, all those types of things. It has to be a pressure canner, has to be under 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes, the whole thing there. You don't, don't cheat on that. If you ever, I've only had one jar in 10 years. 15 years of doing this I've only had one jar that I opened up later and the seal was not you know how um, if you hear this okay that that means it's come undone don't don't even mess with it just throw it away so do not take any chances but if the lid is still good it's not bulging should be fine had a question yes call go on go online and uh, like if it's a presto just go online to presto and ask them I've got this model number can you send me a couple of gaskets and that way you'll have them for I wouldn't mm -mm. no because they're gonna they're not gonna cost that much less on eBay if you're looking at fifty dollars it's just not worth having the hassle of having to keep gaskets around and wait for them to go bad because they always go bad yes um, a pressure cooker the, uh, the difference in a pressure cooker and a pressure canner if you're looking on eBay put in both names because a lot of people don't know the difference they call it a pressure canner when it's actually or they call it a pressure cooker when it's actually a pressure canner but it should be a pressure canner but the, the requirements that I gave you make it a pressure canner some people have said that they've they've done that with pressure cookers but I don't know how they get to 10 pounds of pressure how they know that it's at 10 pounds unless they've got the gauge and all the little things that go with it so they may call it a pressure cooker if it's got all these things it's a pressure canner same same any other questions about canning meat you said something about 
Extension, extension center. If you have a used canner and you're worried that it's not working or you're concerned, okay. In the old days, you, I know you've all heard stories about pressure canners blowing up and it killed Aunt Ethel and all five of her kids. <laughs> it's just, you know what, the accidents did happen. They were generally uh, gasket types and they weren't watching it. They walked away. This is, you know, a car can be dangerous too if you're not careful. But you just have to sit with it. You don't go to the movies while your pressure canner is cooking your meat. You stay right with it. So it's, it's, a, it's just not dangerous. We've been doing it forever. And if you're careful with it, it isn't dangerous, especially the new ones that have all of the release gauges and all the uh, valves and things like that. So they are very safe. Just use common sense. All right, any questions about canning meats? Let's move on. Oh, um, I have some other things that I have to tell you. Look at my little things here. Um, it doesn't take any liquid. Please don't call me and say, do I put water in this? It's just meat. You jam it in as far as you can. Don't cut it up into small pieces. If you put large pieces, you can always cut it up later. So hamburger, I put in raw also. And hamburger, if you, if you broke the jar, you'd still be holding a mason burger. It, you have to literally cut it out of the jar. But if you, if you don't do that, if you cook it first, it turns into little tiny grainy. It's just you can't eat it. So I, I put it in raw. Everything is raw, a little bit of salt. You can put spices in there, but I don't like to. If I want chili and I picked out a jar of hamburger that has taco seasoning, then I'm, you know, I don't have the versatility. So I don't put spices in it except for salt. You can. It's not a big deal. Yes? I was just going to ask on hamburger and you just answered. Okay, any other questions on that? Um, glass top stoves, I used to tell people don't, you probably don't want to cook on a glass top stove, but I have since, I have a glass top stove, probably cooked 300 pounds of meat on it. Um, my sister back east has cooked 600 pounds on her glass top stove, no problems at all. So make that a decision of your own. If you are uncomfortable, then don't. You can use a little propane cooker out in your backyard and do it that way. Um, if it doesn't seal, if you take the meat out, you use good jars, buy new jars to start with, make it just a little investment of saying, okay, I'm going to buy new jars, because if you get jars from DI or Grandma's Attic or something, they may have a little hairline crack and you'll open up your jar and you'll have all this meat floating in the water and it's really sad. So use good jars and then you can reuse them over and over and over because you know that where they came from and how many times they've been used. Um, Let's see, if it doesn't seal, you take it out and one hasn't sealed, you have two options. You can have it for dinner tonight or you can put a new ring and a lid on it and recook re it. it. It'll be double cooked, but it's great for soup. Also, after Thanksgiving, sometimes you'll have a whole lot of turkey left over and you're thinking, you stick it in the freezer and you wait till a year later when it's turned different colors and then you throw it away. Just go ahead and can it. You can can already cooked meat uh, by putting a little liquid bouillon in it, a little chicken bouillon or something like that. And it will be double processed. It's not a big deal. It's great for soup. It doesn't have the same texture as when it's fresh, but it still cooks and seals up beautifully. So you can, I cleaned, my husband went elk hunting, swore he was going to get an elk. So I cleaned out my freezer. It was like, you know, 80 pounds of meat waiting for this huge elk. So we went out and bought some hamburger to fill the freezer. But I cooked everything, everything that was in there. I just put it in jars and it, it's beautiful. It doesn't, doesn't have any, there's, you can use anything with the exceptions of the things that I told you. Um, all right, cookers, uh, I think we've covered everything on that. The, the book tells you what sizes are really good and, and what to get and what not to get. All right, let's go to, uh, in your book, on your source page, the last, nope, nope, page 20, A Bite of Independence. This is a book that is not published anymore, but the publisher I'm good friends with, I don't get any kickbacks on anything, so don't, don't hesitate. Bite of Independence is a really great book on how to make everything from scratch. This is the kind of book that tells you how to make cream of mushroom soup. I didn't know you could make cream of mushroom soup. Little can costs 85 cents. You know, if you, if you do casseroles, if you have a lot of kids and you make casseroles, you're spending a lot of money on that little can of soup. You can make your own cream of mushroom soup with nothing but flour, soup base, some spices and milk, and it costs like 15 cents for two quarts. And you make it fresh. You can cook it in the solar oven. So rather than storing cans of food that have a really short shelf life, you don't know how long they were in the store, you can have cream of mushroom soup in your cans that have 15 and 20 year shelf life. You know, the things that, like flour, you grind that up, um, use white flour, 
well, white wheat, you grind that up, you use your other spices, and you've got a shelf life that went from two years to 15 or 20 years. Tomato soup, graham crackers, soy milk, peanut butter, enchilada sauce, chocolate cake, um, all the different things that you would want to have in your food storage rather than buying them ready-made and have a short shelf life, like a cake mix, you have your own. You have your own recipe for a cake mix that uses flour, sugar, cocoa, salt, things that have a really long shelf life. So the Bite of Independence, if you have another book that gives you things from scratch, that's great. If not, this is a really good book for all those kinds of things. The book that you have has a lot of the recipes in it. It has graham crackers and tomato soup and cream of mushroom soup. So there's a lot of things in the book. Before you go out and buy this book, check the book that you've got and see if those things, the things that you might need aren't already in there. Um, there are things that I call sacred food. Wheat, beans, um, Crisco that comes in the, in the metal top can, not the little pullback, but the Crisco in the old type. Those are sacred food. I'm never going to open those. Hopefully, 50 years from now, when I'm dead, my great-grandchildren will be going through my closets and going, Oh, look at this wheat, how old it is. It costs you a dollar every time you can a can of wheat. If you're making homemade bread all the time, just buy some wheat and put it in a bucket. Because you're, every time you open that, you have to replace it. It's going to cost you another dollar to replace it. So things that have a really, really long shelf life, 15, 20 years, put those in the back of the closet, and 20 years from now, if we haven't used it, hopefully none of us will ever use it in the next 20 years, but if you haven't used it, then you can take it out. You know, your book will be all matted, and who knows what it's going to look like, and you probably won't have any teeth to eat the food. But you're going to say, all right, you know, it's probably still good, but if not, I'll replace it. So that's the things that really last a long time, I do not open. I'll just go buy fresh. Yes, sir? I'm curious, how do you handle, like, kettle beans and the other types of beans? Do you handle them like that? Pressure can them. Okay, so you can them in glass jars. Uh, in the glass jars. Go online, put in pressure can pinto beans, and 500 websites will come up to tell you how to pressure can or how to I, pressure I cook started, them. I started in '96, and I probably have enough food storage for uh, 10 years at least. <laughs> Same here. You know what? Beans are so cheap. Buy some new ones. I know. You know, I've got that same attitude. I just can't throw anything away. Guy with a gun, you know, they always talk about the guy with a gun who's going to come and take my food. He's going to get my soup mix. And <laughs> you guys have eaten soup mix, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, he's going to get my red wheat because I love the white wheat. I just, I have a hard time throwing anything away too. So the beans, I would do pressure cook. Um, let's see, so that's, uh, oh, honey is another thing that's sacred food. You can, and don't buy honey in those great big five gallon jars. Get them in the smaller things because you can put that in the solar oven and the heat will, will bring it back. You know how they, it gets crystallized? You can just heat that up in the solar oven and it's a really easy process, but a great big container. It's really hard to chunk that stuff out and try and reconstitute it. Yes? Where do you find crystals in the You can't. I bought it all. <laughs> when I knew they were going to the foil top, I just went over to, uh, to Costco and bought about 46 pound cases of it and they just went to the foil top and I'm really unhappy about that. But the good news is the foil top still has a 10 year shelf life and that's not bad. So, and we carry the Crisco at the cannery, in, even in the cardboard container, still has, they say, a 10 year shelf life. So, you know, even the butter flavored, it's great. In fact, r somebody remind me to talk about Crisco when we start talking about this. Because, uh, in fact, I'll just tell you now, this little machine, um, I opened up one of my six pound, show you, one of my six pound jars of Crisco. It's called a jar vac. And because somebody said, oh, they don't last that long. And it was five years old. Opened it up and it was beautiful. And I was really ticked to think that I'd opened up my sacred food just to prove a point. And then I'm looking at this six pound of Crisco and I'm going, I am never going to eat six pounds of Crisco in one year because it's going to go bad. Once you open it, it's got one year, maybe not even that long. And so I'm looking at all this Crisco and I thought, hey, 
So I put it in the jars and I, I vacuum packed it, date it, and it's just like it's never been opened. It has its unlimited shelf life again. I've got Crisco now that's three years old that I jar vacuumed. And we'll, we'll talk about more of the jar vacuum, but just so you know that you can do Crisco. If you, in fact, you might want to take your Crisco or your butter flavor, whatever, take it out of the container and jar vac it for your, for your own daily use. You open it up, you unseal it, you take out what you want, you seal it back up, it's just like it's never been opened.